everybody. What a truly awful day for Warner Brothers. Uh, you know, recently some of you had asked me if I thought that major stars would be willing to even go over there these days. And I had said, oh yes, maybe, maybe they would. I don't think so. I think, I think, let's, we're gonna have a very frank discussion about what's going on over there. Uh, I think there are prob huge problems at Warner Brothers. Uh, I think the Warner Brothers executives are causing problems, and I think James Gunn is causing some problems. Uh, I think, but to be fair to everybody, they're all in a really bad spot uh, that I don't know, I don't know if it was avoidable or not. Uh, but I do feel that Warner Brothers is probably broken, and I don't really think it'll ever be fixed, to be honest with you. I think that um, I just see huge mistakes and mistakes and mistakes that are made. It's so bad. Uh, okay. Oh, Alex, that's so generous of you. Happy holidays to you as well. That's so kind of you. Thank you. I really appreciate that. And hey, Raymond, welcome back. Uh, as always, try to please keep uh, your uh, comments to whatever we're discussing, but don't worry, for the final 10 minutes of the stream, you can ask me anything that you would like. All right. Oh, well, maybe we'll do the ask me anything before we do the White Lotus discussion, because that's going to be a spoiler discussion, and I don't want to ruin it for anybody who has not yet seen the show. So that's probably what we'll do. Okay. Let's start out with Patty Jenkins. Ah, oh, man, this is so bad. The whole thing is kind of sad. This whole thing is sad because I love DC. Hey, ES, and I'd like to see it succeed. But I don't think it's gonna. I don't think it's gonna. I had hopes for it just as early as like last week, as you know. But I don't think it's gonna work out. All right. Hey, Captain Marvel. All right, so Patty Jenkins last night said, ugh, I cannot stand inaccuracies. She's like, you're not supposed to talk about, oh, Tammy, thank you for gifting some memberships. That's very, very generous of you. So Patty Jenkins is like, you're not supposed to talk about what happens behind closed doors. And that's true. Everyone's out of control with this talking about behind closed doors garbage. It's ridiculous. No one's supposed to do that. But now everybody is. And you can see why you're not supposed to do that because it's a mess. So Patty Jenkins says, I'm not supposed to talk about what happens behind closed doors. But Patty Jenkins then said, oh yeah, boop, boop, oh yeah, I didn't do the thing. Boopity, boop, boop, boop. So Patty Jenkins says, I just can't let the inaccuracies go. So, and then she goes and I think puts out a lot of maybe her own inaccuracies. So anyway, Patty Jenkins says, I wasn't kicked off Rogue Squadron. I walked away because it was taking too long and I didn't want to delay Wonder Woman 3. And then I saw that Wonder Woman 3 couldn't move forward. Um, and that was really bad. And so uh, I, I, you know, it, and I found, and Patty Jenkins says, I didn't walk away, but I was told that there was nothing I could do or it seemed that there was nothing I could do to move Wonder Woman 3 forward. Uh, and you're like, so what was the issue? Was it a timing issue? Or were you like, you're not, you, they don't want you to do Wonder Woman 3? Like, I don't even think that was clear. So, because she was responding to an article in The Wrap, which had said that she walked away and sent them the Wikipedia definition of a character arc. And you're like, well, I don't know, Patty, that kind of sounds like some of the things you've done in the past. And she didn't dispute that. Uh, oh, thanks, Elise. And then, you know, Dwayne Johnson has had his roller coaster in the trades where first Variety said that Black Adam was going to lose a ton of money. Then he went through Deadline and said, no, it wasn't. And then through Puck, Warner Brothers said he was a liar. I can't believe the trades, by the way, are even involved in all this. I mean, I think that's where it's starting to get really weird, where you're like, why are they running articles? Why are they involved in this war instead of reporting on it? And reporting on it is, you know, I guess like the way I am as a, as a, a, a you know, a, a, um, you know, no sides. You know, it's like, just like, let's see what's happening here. So you're not supposed to talk about behind the scenes. That is a great rule in life. Uh, and if you have a problem, you should, you know, like a problem that's a, a really bad, you should call your lawyer. Uh, you do not talk about things. It's a very good rule in life. And I would hope that everybody would take that to heart. So, 
uh, I have a friend who works in the industry, and we were just talking about Dwayne uh, Johnson the other day. And uh, my friend said, why would Warner Brothers Discovery plant that story in variety? Why would they want everyone to know that they were losing money on Black Adam? Isn't that embarrassing? And I was like, well, it's because there's tremendous pressure to, you know, make a, you know, a Black Adam too. Because my friend was like, oh, thanks, Ben. My friend was like, my industry friend was like, you know, hey, James, Warner Brothers doesn't owe you a, doesn't owe you an re- explanation as to why they don't make Black Adam 2. They, they're totally within their rights to be like, oh, we turned a nice little pro. They don't have to discuss it at all. It's usually in the past, you would never be discussed. We'd never discuss if Black Adam made any money. And then we would never talk about why we weren't making any more of them. We'd just move on. And everybody would save face. That's funny, Galliot. That's a funny uh, quote. But I feel the issue is, is that the Snyder drama has brought in fan involvement. With or without the green light from Warner Brothers Discovery. Although Netflix, I think, is a good example. Netflix finds themselves, yesterday, canceled Netflix was trending. Because some people are pretty upset that they canceled Warrior Nun. So they were like, let's cancel you and see how you like it, Netflix. That's trending top ten. Netflix never commented on it. Netflix has yet to comment on any of their cancellations. They're like, whatever, man. They don't care. And, you know, I think no other studios do it. You don't see Kevin Feige out here tweeting. Kevin Feige's not saying anything. Uh, Hey, Jordan. Ah, thanks. I'm glad you're almost at your next badge. So, uh, thank you, Daniel. So, I think that it's a Pandora's box of making this a two-way street. Don't do it. Don't do it. And I hope that everybody looks at what's happening here and is like, hmm, that looks awful. I should definitely not do that. Uh, So I think, so, because like, but then here's the other problem. Hey, James, fans are not only an issue, but now because fans are so involved and social media gives them direct access. So here's the thing. In the past, Dwayne Johnson could just walk away from Black Adam. But instead, he has all these fans on social media being like, that sure is a giant turkey, Dwayne. And it hurts Dwayne's feelings, and he doesn't like that being out there. So he can't, unfortunately, Dwayne Johnson needs, feels the need to respond. Uh, you know, I wish he would just say, you win some, you lose some. I put it all on the table. I, you know, I put it all out there, and I'm sorry it didn't go over better. Uh, but on to red one, where I'm Santa's bodyguard. Did you see J.K. Simmons pumping iron as Santa? Let's move on to the next movie. That's what you're supposed to do. Uh, I mean, hey, hey, James, uh, Steven says, do you think HB, oh, we, we'll talk about that, Steven. So, yeah, so you're not supposed to talk about this stuff, but I think that Warner Brothers is like Dwayne Johnson is going to whip the fans into a frenzy and he's going to claim that we, he made us money and that he would bring back Henry Cavill and then it's all our fault. So suddenly these things are being argued in public and it's just real and, and very and like in the dirt, in the mud, like it's brutal. Like, that's the problem. Like, I don't think Dwayne Johnson should turn the fans on the Warner Brothers executives either. And then that's why the Warner Brothers executives feel the need to defend themselves. But, you know, they're doing it through the trades by, like, putting out these stories. Although, this is where, this becomes, like, the stuff we're having in conversations about all different areas. Black Adam did lose money. Black Adam is a box office disappointment. I don't even know if anybody, you know... Was Variety's initial story a little clickba- uh, clickbaity? Maybe. I don't know. But, I mean, it's true. It's true. I mean, it's not like it's on the edge and it's like, well, it depends on where you stand as to how Black Adam did. Nope. Guaranteed. It's a clunker. So, uh, so I'm sure the Warner Brothers executives are like, I can't believe we're even having to have this argument. Faith in Film says, I feel that The Rock is trying to rile up the audience to engage in nasty public negotiations. I do agree with that, Faith in Films. I think that's exactly what he's doing. I believe that he might have, he and his team might have been the, been the leakers to some of the Snyder people. I mean, I don't, I didn't hear that, but I wouldn't be surprised because all of a sudden their scoops got ridiculously accurate about only that stuff. So... I wouldn't be surprised. Max is kind of ironic that Jenkins wants sympathy from fans after r- running Wonder Woman to the ground and didn't listen to fans initially by continuing to work with Jeff Johns. That's true, too. Uh, hey, Untamed Blizzard. That's why you got to come over here. I'm telling it all like it is. Nobody here is 100% accurate. And so, I mean, that's why I'm not commenting too much on it on Twitter. I'm like, you're all full of crap. And this is and it's also, it's just so clearly... You can so clearly see that where, the, where the solution is. Black Adam bombed. 
Wonder Woman 1984 was so bad that it ruined Patty Jenkins' entire career. It ruined her future Star Wars movie, and it ruined Wonder Woman 3. Because here's the thing. Oh, by the way, I do want to say, HBO also isn't doing themselves any favor by fighting with all this talent by taking these shows off of their streaming service uh, so they don't have to pay anybody any residuals. Residuals are incredibly important. Residuals, as I've seen some people tweet, are the lifeblood of the uh, working actor and just the working individuals in Hollywood. And so it's particularly cruel for HBO, HBO Max to do that. And they're apparently going to put these shows and air them for free with commercials on something called a fast, which is like a free ad-supported service, which would be different than HBO, HBO Max. And apparently all the studios and streaming services might launch a fast. So you would have like... Disney and Disney, you'd have Disney Plus, you'd have a premium Disney Plus, an ad to your Disney Plus, and then some free garbage service that ran ads that was totally free. Yeah, like Pluto TV and Tubi. Exactly, Sahar. And I'm like, get that garbage out of here. I don't even want to have that discussion. Are you kidding me on that? Like, that's horrible. I, I mean, I still to this day feel I might get a virus by downloading Tubi. <laughs> My parents have called me up several times and been like, can we watch something on this Tubi? And I was like, I don't know. That looks sketchy to me. And they're like, I, they're like, it's owned by Fox. And I'm like, I don't know. I wouldn't touch it. It looks weird to me. And so the idea that all the companies would do this is kind of weird to me. I don't, I don't like it. <laughs> and I'm uh, kind of disgusted by this. This could be the future of streaming. Uh, that's funny, Lisa. So yeah. Uh, so, all right, so here's the thing. So Patty Jenkins writes this letter, and for some reason, James Gunn felt the need. I think James Gunn is doing a lot to protect himself. I think you have to keep that in mind whenever you read any of James Gunn's tweets. So James Gunn writes back last night, <clears throat> and he says, it's true, Patty. Peter and I feel you're nothing but a professional, a polite professional. And I thought that was pretty weird, because it's not like he told her to come back and do Wonder Woman 3. He wasn't like, oh, yeah, Patty, I never canceled Wonder Woman 3. Come on back. He was like, Patty, you're a sweetheart. Don't let the door hit you on the way out. <laughs> he like wrote her a really great recommendation letter to go get work somewhere else. It was hilarious. And no one called him on it because James Gunn is like a sniper on, t on Twitter. And if you say anything he doesn't like, he'll just drag you. And he has this fandom that will just be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And you're like, but he didn't say, he is what? You know, so it's crazy. Oh, uh, it's really actually pretty funny. Uh, you have to laugh because it's so absurd. And I'm in the middle of it. Hey, Lexi. Oh, I'm glad you're also uh, doing very well. Uh, and George says, I'm taking my high school finals, but need my Hollywood news and recap. I'm glad to give you a break. All right. Hey, as told by Gonzo. So, yeah. So... <laughs> We, we haven't even gotten to the Battenson conversation yet, and that one's going to be a doozy. Uh, but yeah, uh, so I think it's, I don't think James Gunn should have responded to that unless he was like, come back, Patty. And I don't know why he thinks or any of his fans think that that was like a nice thing to say to her. And I think she started it by getting involved in the whole thing, by even tweeting that letter. Although that was pretty embarrassing what the rap said about her. But I feel that Warner Brothers didn't want another female project to, to be torpedoed by them after Bad Girl. So they were like, oh, Patty Jenkins was horrible. She was weird. But I do blame Patty Jenkins for her past behavior, which gave those stories credibility. You were like, hmm, that seems like something Patty would do. Hey, as told by Gonzo, welcome. Uh, Max says, gun wrapped Jenkins in the lasso of truth. Did he, though? I don't think anyone's telling the truth because we're going to talk about some of that stuff in a moment. I don't, by the way, I don't think anyone's telling the truth. I've had my fair share of arguments in the past with a couple of people, as you know. I try to avoid it. Sometimes it can't be avoided. And I always find it hilarious when someone's like, industry people would always tell the truth, Grace. They're looking out for themselves just like everybody else. And so I think you should always, like, just look at Henry Cavill. Remember when Henry Cavill said, I'm back, and I said, he's campaigning to be back. And everyone was like, Henry Cavill would never go on social media, Grace, and claim that he was back if he was not. And that's exactly what he did. So, I mean, I just feel like you got to really pay attention to this stuff. Well, what was your super chat? 
I'm, I'm telling a story here. I don't want to get too far off here. Uh, Patty Jenkins says she didn't want Wonder Woman to end on a bad note. Uh, well, it did end on a bad note. There's nothing Patty Jenkins can say that would make Wonder Woman not end on a bad note. Because Warner Brothers said, no, thank you. And then Patty Jenkins complained about it, and they still said, bye. They weren't like, oh, you're right, Patty. They were like, bye-bye. They were like, oh, you're not mean, Patty. We love you. Write us letters. Dan says, who do you think James Gunn can bring in to replace arguably, arguably the two most creative, powerful women in D.C.? Are they, though, Danny? Are they? Are they? I mean, how can they be the most powerful women in D.C. when they drove themselves off a cliff? Uh, Ricky says, uh, hold on, let me answer these, and then we'll move on. To, oh, there's something else that I want to say. Um, Ricky says, imagine Kathleen Kennedy acting the way Gunn does online. Uh, yeah, well, you know, Kathleen Kennedy did it once. And it ruined her career. One time, Kathleen Kennedy said that she felt she didn't owe anything to the OG fans of Star Wars. And that will haunt her forever. It's like Dwayne Johnson's hierarchy in the DC Universe is about to change comment. It ain't never going away. They might as well have gotten it tattooed on themselves. And, you know, nobody learns. You know, you, you do not interact this way with your... Dave Chappelle learned the other day when he brought out Elon Musk and said some of the worst things I've ever heard to his own fans. Uh, Jake says, is Warner Brothers in trouble or is DC dragging the whole company down? Um, I think the DC, I think it's a little bit of both. I think that they don't have the self-control to like just cut that arm off. Danny says, some directors are not ready for big blockbusters. I'd say it's even more than that, Danny. I would say some talent is not able to operate at this level. It's high stakes. It's really high stakes. And so... You know, you have to have tremendous self-control, and it's hard to do, especially today, because there's conspiracy theories. You imagine, like, the iron, the iron will that Kevin Feige has to have, considering all that's said and all the toxicity that has emerged in D.C.? I mean, people say some horrible—I mean, in Marvel, people have been saying some horrible things about Marvel. He hasn't said a word. He hasn't even said anything to defend his decisions. Like, people said the meanest things they could about She-Hulk. Kevin Feige just walked down the green carpet and said, hey, everybody, <laughs> I'll see you at Comic-Con. Watch it, don't watch it, I don't care. Danny says, unless a fantastical variant, leave Battenson alone. That's an interesting idea. Uh, I heard, I saw that, Danny. We're going to discuss that in a minute. Nicholas says, Gal was never a great actress, but I feel bad for her career. As I've said before, don't feel bad for Gal Gadot. She walked away with at least $20 million, considering... Her paydays, she got paid $10 million for Wonder Woman 1984. And it was not good. It, it was a horrible, it's a horrible failure. I liked parts of it. Although, again, I told you from a business perspective, I could see the problems with it. Um, and that's, she's fine. You know, she went home with a lot of money. Here's your parting gifts. It's, it's, it's considerable. Lord Baratheon says, what do you think will happen with Cavill? You know, I got to tell you, I would have thought that James Gunn would have walked away. But James Gunn clearly really wants you to like him. So I could see him maybe keeping Henry Cavill. Let's see. Although, let's just say, as I've told you for a long time now, a number of people have a problem with Henry Cavill. A lot of people do, which is why he doesn't get any major jobs. And that's obviously true. You can't refute that. Uh, so just, just pointing it out. All right. Uh, and so, you know, apply that where you might. It's very difficult to report on DC these days by James Gunn's own design. We'll talk about that in a minute. So anyway, J so I also wanted to point out that by James Gunn replying to Patty Jenkins and saying that she was an absolute professional delight, is he calling the Warner Brothers executives who leased that, who leaked that story, that story to uh, the rap liars? I mean, I would think the Warner Brothers executives would be like, what? Whose side are you on here? And I think it's very clear that James Gunn is on James Gunn's side. And I can understand that. He's in a very difficult spot. But I think it's important to have friends. I think it's important to have friends with the Warner Brothers executives. And I think it's important to have friends in the press. And on that note, let's move on to story number two, which is brutal. It's just going to get worse, too, by the way. I've never seen someone take a trade down like James Gunn did today. And I would not have done that. It doesn't matter that he said Adam V. Very was a nice guy. He was like, it's like telling someone you're a nice guy before you just completely pummel them into oblivion. He was like, oh, I like Adam V. Very. But here's the problem. He not only 
pummeled Adam B. Very. Boop, boopity boop, boop. But he pummeled the entire staff at Variety. Unlike myself or someone at a trade, you have to run these stories up the flagpole and an editor has to approve them. Um, not only, uh, that's right, Wound, not only like your editor and your division, but the editor in chief probably for some stories, well, certainly now, has to look at these things and make sure that they feel good enough about them. And so that's the thing about Adam B. Very's story. Everybody, um, Cosmics, I have not worked for Variety. I used to be a part of PMC as an affiliate, which owns Variety. Um, now they actually own all three trades, but I have not been there for a while. Uh, Lucky says, uh, in regards to total reboot on DC, how are they keeping Viola Davis as a man? Uh, we don't know what they're doing, Lucky, yet. We don't know. We don't know for sure. So anyway, um, it's just really bad for Variety. Like, it just makes them look really, really bad. And so I'll just tell you, uh, now, for instance, I have not heard about James Gunn's plans. Uh, I've not heard anything about James Gunn's plans, okay? Uh, that stuff should be leaking, I assume, pretty soon. Uh, but I do not have a source on whether or not he wanted to use uh, Robert Pattinson's Batman as his main Batman. I've been suggesting it, but I had not hear, heard that from any sources. So when Variety broke their story this morning before James Gunn awoke from his slumber, because, you know, he basically just got up and looked at his phone and said, holy shit, and tweeted out that that was a lie, <laughs> okay? But I asked my sources. I said, wow, this is an interesting story from Variety. Is this true? And I was going to discuss on the stream until James Gunn commented what my sources said. And my sources said that it was kind of true, that it was an idea that they had discussed, but Matt Reeves is so strongly against it, it's probably not going to happen. And that's what happened, you know, but Matt, because, you know, like, so the idea was is that they kind of wanted to do it, but Matt Reeves was like, I told you no, I meant no, no. And for some reason, they're like, okay, whatever you want, Matt. I'd be like, do you like working here or not? Uh, I have not officially greenlit your sequel. Navy EMT says it would be smart to scrap all new uh, and in-production DC movies for the next five to 10 years. That's, all t that's too long. No studio has the self-control to do that. And then Lord Baratheon says, if Cavill's done a Superman, do you think he'll get a Marvel gig? Uh, I don't think so at this point. I think maybe he can get Bond. Uh, I saw Shawshank. I saw that Matt Reeves. Matt Reeves was delighted that James Gunn shot this down because he doesn't want to do it. Although if I were Matt Reeves, I wouldn't have done that either. I'd be like, Matt, you've been so well behaved this whole time. Why Don't do it. Don't do it. Stay out of this. All right. So, so that's the deal. So I, I'm telling my story a little bit out of order. So basically James Gunn came in and said, this story is entirely untrue. And I think that James Gunn is having a very black and white approach to stories that are actually full of a lot of grays. And I do feel that while that story probably is not true now, I think there was a point where it was true, or at least it was a discussion taking place. There might be too many cooks in the kitchen over there. You might also have a situation where apparently Mike DeLuca and Pam Abdi are having their own conversations. And maybe they said, Hey, Stephen, maybe they said, wouldn't it be great if Robert Pattinson was our main Batman? And someone overheard that and leaked it to Variety. So it was true, even though maybe James Gunn himself had never considered it. So it's very difficult. Now, I can understand, yes, James Gunn, as Vanderson Valley pointed out, Vanderson, uh, James Gunn doesn't want things to go out of control. And things can go out of control. James Gunn wants to protect himself, and he wants to protect his relationship with fans. And that's, again, understandable. Some people were livid this morning at this news. I felt unreasonably so. Some people were having, like, some people were, ha like, mo like, mocking me when James Gunn debunked it. Like, he debunked it, Grace. And I'm like, I just said it was a good idea. I didn't say that I'd heard it, and I wasn't reporting it. And they were like, ha, 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 ha. And I was like, you guys are weird. And then also some person said, and I thought this was very telling, they were like, why should I lose my Batman, in, in, as in Ben Affleck, and you Robert Pattinson fans get to keep yours? That's unfair. We should all be unhappy. And you're like, okay, that's weird. <laughs> uh, I think that here's the uh, thing. At the end of the day, James Gunn can try and make people not feel bad, but eventually they're going to be upset. Eventually, it's, he, it's unavoidable. I guess maybe he just wants it to happen once when he makes his final choice. Because he can't have, 
he's going to have to decide. Clearly, he can't go with Pattinson because Matt Reeves said no. So he's going to have to either keep Ben Affleck, Ben Affleck, which I think most people would be upset about because we're so tired of this crap, okay? And then on the other side, okay, if he, if he gets somebody else, the very vocal people, the extremely vocal people, um, <clears throat> that's hilarious. Uh, I, I, I can't help my, Andrew says, what's the beef between Gunn and you? Uh, are you kidding? I, I'm a trailblazer. You know, I, I know everybody has a problem with Gunn. He's gonna, I, I, I would suspect, upset every single media person there is. Uh, and like myself, they'll just have to deal with it. Um, because again, I think he's reporting on things in a, with a black and white perspective on things that have a lot of gray. But you know, James Gunn and I are currently getting along. We'll see how long, you know, we'll see. I don't want to fight with anybody. I just want to tell you the truth. I just want to tell you an accurate depiction of what's happening. Uh, when I, and I have no, I, and I'm a, I'm a disinterested third party. I don't have any, any agenda, which is fine you know, which is understandable. And it's not, not a problem that the other people do. They're clearly on teams. They're clearly on teams. And we can see their jerseys. Hey, Holly Jervis. Uh, all right, so what was I saying? Uh, Cavill for Batman. Um, so yeah, so the thing is, is that there's no way that James Gunn isn't going to make a lot of people very upset. Oh yeah, that's what I was saying. If he gets rid of Ben Affleck, there's going to be a ton of people that are absolutely furious. And they're very, the very vocal ones who are the most active online. They're going to be really, so there's, he can't avoid it. So I guess he's trying to just contain it, maybe. Maybe he's just trying to contain it. But here's the other problem. If he can't convince, um, I would agree with that, Bruce Wayne. I do not think James Gunn should interact at this level. We'll talk about that in a moment. But um, I'll, I'll get back to the reporting in just a moment. Oh, thanks, Keith. If he can't use Matt Reeves, Robert Pattinson as his main Batman, that means that James Gunn is going to have two Batman. And that's the problem they've had the whole time. That it's, it pits two actors against each other. And, uh, you know, you have to pick which one, um, you know, you have to pick which one you're going to support. And it divides your fandom instead of everybody getting behind a single Batman. And I think that's a real problem. Uh, Toby, you think two Batmans would be fine. But would it, would it be really be fine? You know, if, you know you, it would be fine for you. It would make you happy because you would get what you wanted. But would it be best for Warner Brothers in DC? I don't think so. And it, here's the thing. As soon as James Gunn casts a new Batman, hey, Winnable Peach, people are either going to say that person is nowhere good as Robert Pattinson or they're going to say, oh, wow, that person's much better than Robert Pattinson. So who gets hurt? So it's a mess. It's just a mess. And I think they should have done it. I've been saying it for a very long time that they should have. I don't think we should have multiple Jokers either, Ian. You don't have multiple versions of the same character over at Marvel. And it's very effective. Even when you have people take over the mantle, it's because the other person isn't around. David Kyle says, don't forget we still have Keaton running around. We don't, though. He's going to run around the Flash and then Keaton's out of here. So... I think it's a mess, and I think that I real I, I thought that they were going to have the the chutzpah to go in there and take care of business, but I think it's going to be I think you're basically you're going to have Matt Reeves's situation, and then you're going to have probably an expansion of James Gunn's Suicide Squad situation into the whole rest of DC, and that's what you're going to have, and you're going to be divided. Some people will prefer the Reeves verse. Some people refer, prefer the gun verse. But all of Gunn's talk about how we're all going to be one big happy universe is already not true. Because there's already a Reeves verse now. So how, does, so how is his, 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 his thesis statement is already disproven? I feel like I'm taking crazy pills covering Warner Brothers DC. Ali says, I would be extremely disappointed if Pattinson's Batman doesn't get to be a part of the larger universe. He's, an ama he's the best. He is an amazing live-action Batman. His eyes alone are amazing. Toby says, we're going to have two Harley Quinns. We shouldn't. No two of anything. That's right. I want to nuke it from orbit whelmed. And Alex also agrees. And Steven says, did you see we almost got Pfeiffer back? Eh, I'm 
not that sad about it because I don't think Michelle Pfeiffer's done a great job in anything I've seen her in recently. So I don't feel bad about it. I think that Robert Pattinson's Batman is amazing. And I think, you know, Matt Reeves is like, oh, it, my mind's grounded. And you're like, Batman's a grounded character. So what's the problem with that? I mean, if Matt Reeves feels he can do Mr. Freeze, he can do Superman. And I don't want to hear it. I saw some people talking about the fact that wouldn't it be amazing to put Batman's, uh, I mean, Robert Pattinson's Batman against a superpowered alien. That would be what it was actually like for Batman if a, if a Superman showed up. And that's another, that's a good point. Who said that? That's a good point. It will be okay because you have a situation where Matt Reeves could mess this whole thing up. And then everyone's going to be like, you know, Reeves, you wouldn't play ball. And now we're stuck in the same crap situation we were before. Stephen M. Rosado, because I believe my sources, and I believe my sources, I believe it when I have actual scripts from something. Even if someone, just because someone tweets that something isn't true, you know, I'm looking at scripts and I, that are for word, the source, you know, when it came out. Uh, and I, so I believe that this was an idea that was kicked around, but I also believe that it was shot down. Uh, let's see here. Mike Drop says, you were right a while ago. Do Black Adam or Suicide Squad kills the Justice League. Have a good send off for everyone and move on. Yeah, I liked that idea too. Hey, Rodrigo. You know, I thought we might have a situation where James Gunn actually and I were on the same page. I was like, wow, isn't the world funny? And that's not what is happening at all. Uh, how do you think DC can compete with Marvel? I don't think they ever will if they continue down this path. I'm like the ghost of a movie's future. If these shadows remain unchanged... We're just in for more junk. Bruce says, two of anything would be terrible. This is the current mess. Yeah, exactly. And then Franco says, that's one of the reasons they don't follow the comics. Yeah, the comics are unreadable these days. I don't buy as many comics as I used to. And then Ali says, can't James Gunn tell Matt Reeves what to do? You would think, but I don't think, I think James Gunn doesn't want to fight with him. Uh, I don't know. Go ask James Gunn. He likes to tell people. I mean, you'll get, I don't know what kind of answer you'll get. I don't know. I, I don't. I think that James Gunn's tweets are also very vague, intentionally so. So he acts like he's giving you like the unvarnished truth, but instead it's like talking to Henry Cavill and you're like, but what you like, we have follow-up questions and you didn't discern or specify about these things. And then you get nothing back. And it's like, oh, okay. So go ask him, go ask him, say, you know, well, you know, why can't you just tell Matt Reeves what to do? And I'm sure he'll say something like, I wouldn't dream of telling Matt Reeves what to do. And you're like, but you're not, James Gunn can't think like a director anymore. He needs to think like an executive. Uh, that's right, Ali. As good as Nolan was, Nolan was like, I don't want to do these things. Oh, I'm just, you know, I don't want to leave. You know, I, I, I want to I stay here because my involvement with Batman and DC gets me to do what I really want, but I'm not actually interested in what I'm doing. Exactly. That was, I think that Christopher Nolan, for all the good that he did for DC, also really hurt DC. He hurt them a lot. Um, and then Jordan says, well, I love Reeves and I think the Batman is the best comic book film I've seen. It's ridiculous for him not wanting his Batman in the main DC universe. Yeah, it's, it's selfish. Uh, hey, Matthew, we do live in a society, Galliot. And it's again, DC, Warner Brothers falling for the same thing where they listen to their, what their creatives want. They're like, hey, what do you do? And I'm sitting here being like, who cares what they want to do? They're not in charge. You're in charge. DC is in charge. James Gunn also said that he was going to do what's best for DC and the DC characters. And he's already not doing that. Uh, he's still putting creatives first. Wizzelante says DC is never ending. Battinson should pilot DC. <laughs> um, yeah. And then Deathstroke kills the DCU? I don't know. Um... Shawshank says, James Gunn and David are conning everyone into selling Warner Brothers Discovery. There is no plan. Well, I don't think James Gunn cares about that. He wouldn't get any money out of that. Uh, I think that's what Zaslav's doing. And then Millie Joe says, we have a multiverse since 1939. If we can have Batman and animation games and TV, we can have multiple Batman around. We, but that's not true, Mill, Millie, because we've tried it and it doesn't work. I don't think, no, the Black Label comics really sell Castellos way, right? I'm sorry if I missed someone's super chat. All right, let me get back to what I'm talking about here, okay? All right, so here's the problem with also the other situation here. By James Gunn weighing in on what this, this variety story, I think that he's hanging out Warner Brothers executives to dry because, as I told you, there was some truth to that story. Hey, 80s model, there was some truth to it. 
Um, I'm not saying it's 100% true. It wasn't my source. But everyone in the Scoop News community believes that story to have some truth in it. And why do you want to upset everybody in the News Scoop community? Why would you do that? It makes no sense to me. And that's the other problem. I think that Gunn is, you know, really putting the press in a difficult position. And as I said, it's very embarrassing for Variety, for the whole publication. As of we started going live, Adam B. Very hadn't responded. I don't know if he will respond. I probably, if I were him, I wouldn't respond. What's he going to say to that? Um, that's right, Bumblebee. And thank you. That's very kind of you. So I think, you know, maybe he'll respond. You know, maybe. I think it would be a mistake, too. Because, I mean, either Adam B. Very trusts his sources or he doesn't. And I have to tell you, and that's the other problem, with the trades kind of like getting involved in this fight and running like the fake Black Adam numbers and stuff like that, now they start to not be as believable. Like it used to be, once you see it in a trade, it's true. Hey, Maruthi. And that's how we felt, because the trades have to be so careful. But now you're like, oh, I mean, are the trades just like everybody else? Hey, Whelmed. And then Mr. F says, I don't like bullying Reeves into making a movie he doesn't want to do. Come on, Mr. F. I mean, these, aren't, these are $200 million products. I mean, that's a, I, I, don't, I don't agree with that at all. I mean, I certainly want him to be happy and to feel like he's in a good, creative, safe space, but he has to deliver certain things. Ali says, what do you think of wanting Pattinson to be separate? Personally, it bothers me that this view is so prevalent. I think maybe it's because maybe Matt Reeves is like, I see what a disaster it is over there. Stay away from me. Let's see how Matt Reeves feels maybe when the penguin crashes and burns on HBO Max. Let's see how he feels then. Hey, Kuzumel. Nicholas says, we need the movie The Suicide Squad Kills the Justice League. Yeah, I mean, I would have been okay with that. It's just a mess. Mr. F says, it feels like people who just want Nolan again, not comic book Batman. Um, do they want Nolan again? I mean, I feel like you couldn't get more of a comic book Batman than the Batman. Lena says, Grace, do you think that Gal Gadot will stick around as Wonder Woman? Uh, I think she's probably deciding. I think she's probably wondering if she's going to be invited back. I think she's probably, I think that hasn't been decided. I think that's why she hasn't commented, to be honest with you. Ollie says, why can't someone else make crossover movies and Reeves make solo movies? Well, I guess he has some cover, he's some control over that. Hey, status, a statue. Oh, statuesque, thank you. That's very kind of you. I think I recognize your photo. When you guys don't keep the same names and stuff from different services, I'm not always sure if it's you or not. All right, so as I said, I'm really curious as to what this does to Gunn's relationship with the press. You know, before a lot of you were laughing and saying, oh, isn't it hilarious? He fights with scoopers. What a, what, a, what a road warrior. But I think fighting with the trades is a whole different situation because um, they have advertisers. And it's, they play by the rules because that's the only thing that served them well. You know, uh, Josh Josh says, why is Penguin going to flop? Uh, let's see. I'm not sure it's going to flop, but I think it might. I mean, it's not very Batman-y. I mean, let's see. So I feel like you really don't want to fight with the trades, right? I think that's a really bad idea. Hey, George Gonzalez, if I were running a major studio, I'd want the trades to like me. I'd want the press to like me. But, you know, apparently that's not so... Gun's more concerned with you liking him. And let's see how it works out for him. I mean, let's see. You know, I mean, you you got to be squeaky clean to have a problem with the press, to fight with the press. It's just really tough. It's really tough. I mean, what is the, what is the, let's talk about this thing. It is a little like Elon Musk, Jennifer. I, it's funny that you say that because I was going to say at the very end of this, I'll say it now. I was going to say, you don't see Kevin Feige tweeting. Peter Safran ain't saying anything. Uh, and all the Warner Brothers executives play by the rules and they go through back channels and leak stories to the trades. But to directly talk like this, too much interaction didn't really do Elon Musk any favors. And I don't know why anybody else would continue to do that. Uh, ooh, who would be like, oh, yes, me, me, I'm going to do that. That sounds like a great idea. Um, Sean Turner says, could they wait for Reeves to finish his trilogy? That's maybe an idea. But maybe it would be more than a trilogy for Reeves. Maybe it's super successful and you want to just keep going with that. Thank you, Dennis. Faith in Film says, isn't it clear that Cavill isn't the greatest Superman? Why don't they acknowledge it? 
Well, that's because some people who are very vocal believe he is like Jesus. And so they're very difficult to talk to. Uh, and then Ali says, Pattinson is my live action comic book Batman, and I just want him to be part of the DC universe. I, I would too, but apparently Matt Reeves said no, and James Gunn said okay. So that's tough. So let me just, let me paint a picture for you. Let me, one of the things that I think is a great skill in life is to be able to think things through and to kind of predict how things are going to go down a certain path so that you can decide if you want to go down that path. So if you call out the press like this, what does that mean for them going forward? Do they have to run every story by James Gunn personally? Because they do trust their sources. And the Scoop community, I have to tell you, is very small. We all kind of talk behind the scenes. We all know what's going on. And, you know, I think that you don't want to have a situation where everybody in the Scoop community is like, somebody's not being totally 100%, right? And I think that it would be horrible for the trades to feel that they have to run everything by James Gunn because then they just become, what, the publicity department for DC? That kind of takes out any of the, that kind of takes out any of the being a journalist part of it. Right? I mean, I think that it's fine to play ball with the studios, but it's quite another to make, you know, to lose all dignity as, an, as, a, as a singular out, uh, outfit. I mean, I think that's another issue. And I think the trades are going to be like, this is a step too far. You know, it's a step too far to make us have to do that. Thanks, Paul. This is a very difficult discussion. And I'm glad that you feel I'm doing a good job with it. Uh, that's right, Franco. I would agree with that as well. Hey, Jackie. Uh, I think Elon Musk is a really strong comparison. Very similar personality type, very similar comparison. Hey, Doug. Uh, so, <clears throat> and also, don't you want the Warner Brothers executives to like you? Who has to renew your contract? Who has to green light your movies? Who has to back you to the trades? Or who has to go to the trades and say bad stuff about you? It's all stuff to keep in mind. And I would hope that everybody would keep this in mind and how they conduct themselves in their own life. It's always better to have friends. Hey, Sean Turner. And dignity. Like, that's right, Ian. I think that Mike DeLuca and Pam Abdi might be having a rough day. Because I better, you better believe that Adam B. Vary is calling up his source and being like, what the F? What did you do to me? And now, because, you know, I think, again, up until now, James Gunn's been, like, taking out, like, scoop people, scooper people. But I would not have taken on a trade. Uh, let's see here. T.J. Williams says maybe Matt Reeves being... And also, oh yeah, this is the final comment I want to make on this. It's important for people to talk about your product. It's important for people to talk about your franchise. People come up with some crazy Marvel theories. And a lot of them are very negative these days. And Kevin Feige, he doesn't care. Kevin Feige just wants you to talk about Marvel. He wants Marvel to dominate the conversation so you don't have room in your day to talk about anybody else. But if James Gunn is going to shut down this aggressively, all DC chatter, <coughs> especially when, again, as I told you, there is a kernel of truth here. Why couldn't he just say we talked about it and we decided against it? You know? Or, you know... To say it's entirely untrue and Adam B. Vary needs new sources, no one's going to cover DC. Except for me, because I can't help myself. <laughs> and I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not afraid. I don't care. Because um, I trust my sources, and I know I trust my reporting, and I know what I'm reporting, and I, and I, I very fully believe in it. But also, I don't have an editor-in-chief to answer to. I don't have advertisers, to, advertising dollars. And that's a very serious situation. That I know I can also tell you something, that a lot of times the trades are upset that we scoopers can outscoop them because we don't have to jump through as many hoops as they do. And they're very frustrated by it. They're like, man, we got beat to a story again because these people can just talk about this, whereas we have to go through all these back channels and get the studios to say it's okay for us to talk about it. But they've always done that because the studios were so nice to them. But if the studios aren't going to be nice to them, what are they doing that for? It just turns them into chumps. And I think that that is something to consider. And I would not want the trades to feel that I made them into chumps. So 
Let's, that's something to think about. All right, so we're gonna, I'm going to answer questions about this, and then we'll go to the third story because it's spoilery. Drago says, I'm sick at home today because I, oh, I'm sorry you tested positive for COVID, but you're getting one heck of a live stream. Maybe I can burn the COVID out of your system with these, with these truths. Uh, Ali says, I've been having a very difficult time covering this. I mean, all reporters, I'm sure, feel the same way in the space right now. That's why I did it as a live. I was like, let's just do it. But that's why I haven't been tweeting about it as much. Also, I didn't want to kick Dwayne Johnson when he was down, when everyone called him a liar. That was so bad. Uh, Ali says, do you, and also, I think Dwayne Johnson is one tweet away from turning into James Gunn and Elon Musk and starting to call out reporters. I think that's how bad it is. Uh, I'm surprised. Uh, I was talking to my industry friend, and my industry friend was like, I think someone else tweets for Dwayne Johnson. And I was like, well, then he should fire that person because they're per tweeting out some very personal-sounding tweets. Um, Ali says, do you agree with Keith that the character is bigger than one creative and Reeves should not have that much control? I've always believed that. I've always believed that the character is the most important, and that I think it has been ridiculous. Look what happened when they said, hey, Margot Robbie, what do you want to do with Harley Quinn? Who cares? Uh, and James Gunn said that that was going to be his modus operandi, that he was going to do that. And he didn't. He's not. He's already not doing it. It's going to be the exact same stupid thing under different leadership. Uh, thanks, Newswriter22. I really appreciate your guys' support. That's one of the things that allows me to do what I do. Um... Thanks, Wound. Uh, Lyra says, what will you do with the DCEU if you were in Gunn's shoes? I would build up from the Batman. And if Matt Reeves wouldn't allow me to, I would be like, okay, you can make one more movie and then you're done. How do you like them apples? <laughs> That's what I would honestly say to him. I'd be like, okay. We already said we're going to make the Batman 2. People are excited about it. You can make it because I'm, you know, I got a lot of stuff to do. It's going to be a while before I put out a movie. So you can make one more. And then I'm going to tell everybody that you're done. I'm going to say we're making one more, and then we're going to start from scratch. And Matt Reeves is off. I'd, I'd, I'd turn Matt Reeves into Patty Jenkins. I'd say Matt Reeves walked away. I gave him a choice. I said, here's a fork in the road, Matt. You can let me bring Pattinson into the main DCEU, or you can finish up with uh, Batman 2. And that's what I do. That's right. How do you like them bats? Ah, uh, thanks, Merv. Thanks, Merv. The Brendan V says, Grace, you're taking this way too seriously. Well, it is my livelihood and job, Brendan. So, yeah, I do take it very seriously. Ah, uh, thanks, Lewis. Welcome, uh, Hazer. I think I'm, I hope I'm, I'm sure I'm mispronouncing, mispronouncing that. Max says, hey, Grace. So we're doing Q&A right now. We'll do Q&A for 10 minutes. What time is it? It's 1.37. We'll do Q&A until 1.47, and then we'll do spoiler lotus uh, discussion. Max says, hi, Grace. How do you think the Joker 2 will handle the abusive and toxic aspects of the Joker and Harley relationship? Let's see. It's going to It's going to do it with song, apparently. Oh, let's see here. Uh, thanks, Jennifer. That's a kind thing for you to say. Mr. F says, thank you for being you, Grace. As much as you might dread talking about this stuff, I look forward to it because you do it with candor and a sense of humor. My pleasure. It's frustrating to me to sometimes look online and see things not being said that are just so obvious. Uh, thank you, Franco. Uh, Snooper, uh, welcome. Welcome back, Snooper to 99. Amy says, love your enthusiasm, and it will ruin doing DC Comics at Universal Studios theme park. It would be great if Disney, and Marvel and if Disney had Marvel and Universal had DC. I hope so, but, you know, Universal might be like, oh, do we really want to buy this it's a pile of garbage? Uh, let's see here. Um, Jordan says, I think I can speak for everyone here when I say that we as a community see the hard work that you put in and it shows. Oh, that's very kind, Jordan. I appreciate that. Thank you. All right. So let's see here. What have I got here? All right. Let's do some questions here. Um, Anton says, do you think the Snyder fans are scaring James Gunn? No, I don't think they're scaring James Gunn. I think that James Gunn right now feels that he can pull off the impossible and make everyone like him. And he can't. And I, I, I think that it'll, the, more, the longer it takes for him to realize that, the more damage he's going to end up doing. Welm says, why would you need to bring Matt Reeves with you? You own Pattinson. But would ba I don't know. I, got, I guess I'd have a conversation with Robert Pattinson and be like, are you going to jet? 
if I get rid of Matt Reeves? Mika says, Grace, aren't you excited for the trial of Amanda Waller? I was excited for it, but I feel like I agree with people. Like, if you're going to start from scratch, you got to have to start from scratch or from the, the, ba uh, the Batman. Sorry, Wiccan, I haven't heard any Young Avengers tea recently. I'm, I'm sorry about that. Let's see here. And then, uh, let's see. Ali says, can you get behind a DC universe with a Batman who's not Pattinson? Because I don't think I can. Well, are they going to coexist? I mean, let's see who he casts. I worry about it. Is it going to be like, you know, cool Suicide Squad Batman? Then I'd be a little nervous about it. Toon Lincoln says, wait, so it's just going to end up being the same old broken DCEU? I, I think there's a chance, Toon Limkins. It's We have to hear what James Gunn pitches. We won't know for sure until he pitches it. But I got to tell you, it's not looking great. Uh, Raymond says, is this your only job? Also, do you smoke weed? Raymond, that is one of the most interesting, honest questions I've ever gotten. This is my only job, and I do not smoke weed. Uh, hey, Clark Barrett, I actually don't partake in any substances. I don't drink. I don't smoke, and I don't uh, do any drugs. Uh, Clark Bear, hey Clark, Clark, welcome back. Let's see here. Uh, Roberto says, Grace, how do you think the recent failure of Strange World would affect the Wish movie? Let's see. I think Bob Iger's gonna wanna sit there and look at that really closely. And then I think that he's going to, you know, maybe, maybe you might see it get pushed back. Maybe it's fine. Maybe it's in good shape. Let's see. And then Winnable Peach says, I hope Joker 2 isn't a ripoff of A Star is Born the same way the first one was a ripoff of Taxi Driver. It's going to be a ripoff of a movie, I think, called like New York, New York or something. Some Robert De Niro, Liza Minnelli movie. That's what it's a ripoff of. Tammy says, great, the history is there with DC, so are they overthinking this? Look at the source material. Well, I don't know, Tammy. The comics tried to reboot, and it's kind of a mess in the comic space now, too. The classic comics are amazing, and I wish that that's what they were building upon. Or the Frank Miller age is really good. Frank Miller, Jeff Loeb, that sweet spot was, like, really good stuff. Basically, when I got into comics first, <laughs> everybody feels that when they started reading comics was when they were really good. Uh, Andrew, I did like Westworld. I liked the first half of season four, and then I thought with season four, the second half, it was awful, and I was like, it's all the same problems as before. Lewis says, wouldn't Gunn-esque characters feel odd with the Batman's tone? Well, would Gunn put his stamp on everything? And that, for that to work, Gunn would have to only put his stamp on the quirkier characters, and then everything else would have to be better. Oh, I don't know, Steven. I loved Joker myself, so I don't know if I could agree with that. Poke says, what about Rogue Squadron? She's not still making that. She just said that to save face. That's like Ryan Johnson might still someday make his Star Wars trilogy. Nope. It's not going to happen. Devin says, Grace, you've been dead on about all of your predictions, and DC should listen. Do you think all the... Thank you, Devin. Do you think all this brand damage between DC and Wizarding World could cost Warner Brothers the universal buyout? Maybe... That's a good question. Maybe they should just stop for a year or two years. And then in 2024, be like, well, you started up again. You know, maybe. Maybe Warner Brothers will buy part of it and sell DC. Who would buy DC, though, at this point? Who would want it? I mean, you kick these tires and fart noises come out. Let's see here. Juan Carlos says, also now that the Snyderverse is dead, did Cavill make the right choice leaving The Witcher? Well, you know, he's not technically dead, until they cast somebody else as Superman, because then people will always be holding out hope that they might change their mind. And there's always a chance. But yeah, I think he made a huge mistake leaving The Witcher. And he made an enemy out of Netflix, which is really bad. HT says, I mean, when, when Henry Cavill has few friends in the business to begin with, H. Tiz is like, Wonder Brothers Discovery should finish the Batman 2 and Joker 2 and then start all over. I would agree with that, H. Tiz. I'm thinking that's maybe how it's starting to look. Let's see here. Jennifer, it's so nice to see you. I always love your avatar picture. Really enjoying this live stream, Grace. Love your candor. What do you think the communication is like between Saffron and Gunn during all this? That's a great question, Jennifer. 
I hope they share an office. And Peter Safran's just cowering behind his laptop and his desk and being like, please don't take me down with you. <laughs> that was so funny. I think it's interesting that Peter Safran is so quiet. We've been joking that we're like, and Peter Safran is also running DC. Hey guys, what about Peter Safran? And Peter Safran might be back like, no, don't bring me up. I'm not here. I'm just cashing the checks. Dennis says, James Gunn tweeted there a few. Oh yeah, I saw that. I saw that, Dennis. We've been talking about that quite a bit. Uh, as told by Gonzo says, how do you think the Flash movie will mix things up? Um, I'm sure it's watchable. But, I mean, like, is it, though? I mean, at that point in June, when we know we're probably going to start over from scratch, who cares? I think they should dump it on HBO Max. Somebody had that idea, and I thought that was a pretty good one. Or take the tax right off, since they're so cash poor over there. Binge God says, have you ever thought about ignoring super chats that aren't on topic? Uh, that's funny, Binge God. Um, I feel if people are paying, I have to answer their question. I feel pretty strongly about that. Uh, Jiko says, Grace, are you going? And we're also, we're, that we're, right now, we're in the free for all. Jiko says, Grace, are you going to check out the Beauty and the Beast? Uh, I don't like those live action things. No, I'm not going to watch that. Kyle Bailey says, also appreciate the honesty and upfrontness of your reporting. Do you have any favorite things to do or places to go in New York City during Christmas? If you've seen it in a Christmas movie, I enjoy doing it. I love looking at the tree. If you want to go look at the Rockefeller Center tree, do it during the week because it's insanely, ridiculously, and somewhat unsafely crowded on the weekend. I like going shopping. Macy's Santa Land is pretty great when it's not too COVID-y. Uh, I just really love uh, the city at Christmas. It's a great time to be here. David uh, said, Grace, heart your, you and your vids. Been watching since 2015. Ah, thank you. What are some of your 2023 goals, be it personal, with your channel? Um, I liked that today things were getting back more to normal. I had two trailer reactions this morning. Avatar's coming out. We're doing a live. It's like, ah, oh, man, and like things are getting back to the way they were. And Franco says, Jennifer Lawrence could be the new Wonder Woman as the first female superhero. That's funny, Franco. Yeah, she really stepped in that one, boy. She, you know, she took it like a pro, though. I gotta say. Oh, Holly, I'm sorry, I missed your super chat. Let me go find it. I was proud of her. I was proud of her. She, did, she didn't call anybody out or say everybody was mean. She was like, I misspoke. Let me clarify. Although nobody ever picks up the clarification like they do the original story. So you got to be really careful. Monique is interesting casting for Amanda Waller, Faith and Films. I kind of like that. Let's see here. Where is the chat that I missed? Hold on. I'm going to find it. Ah, oh, what happened? Okay. Lord Baratheon says, at this point, is, uh, which is in better shape, the Sonyverse or the DCEU? Still the DCEU. Nothing's worse than the Sonyverse. Bruno says, I just finished watching Severance, thanks to you. Oh, I'm so happy. Welcome to the party. It's so good. Am uh, Deep says, are you looking forward to Nolan's new film? I am actually, kind of. He's doing this stupid trailer exclusive only in theaters garbage, though, but so whatever, but it's a little annoying. Rhett says, I think DC should base it off the older comics, not the new DC. Definitely not Rebirth. Thousand percent agree, Rhett. Has been David says, how close is what you do now full time to what you wanted to do for a living, or did you discover this unique type of job along the way? That is a very hard question to answer. Uh, I wanted to do something in the entertainment business, and uh, you know, knock on wood, I'm, I'm having fun today. That's that's how I'll answer that. How where how far back was your super chat? My goodness, are you did you sure you put one in here? I don't even see it. You're going to have, ah, uh, I've run, I can't even find it anymore. I'm sorry. Steven wants to go to White Lotus. That's right, we are past the time. I'll do two more questions. Uh, let's see here. Glalie, I agree, Amanda Waller was quite good. I mean, uh, Viola Davis was quite good as Amanda Waller, but if we're not willing to make some sacrifices, how can we ask others to? I'll watch this in honor of the Scream trailer. Do you have any scary New York City stories? As a germaphobe, I bet you have a ton. Yeah, I'm a germaphobe, and New York City is a tough place for me, but I do love it here. Uh, Joss Tannen says, just like James Gunn soft rebooted Suicide Squad, he's going to soft reboot DCE DCU. Old actors, new stories. I don't know. I don't know. I'm not, I think if it's not clear cut. I mean, I don't think the Suicide Squad did that well. 
I mean, I'm sure there will be people who say that it did, and it did come out during a pandemic, and it did better than some other movies. But that's like Dwayne Johnson saying he made as much money as Captain America, <laughs> the first one. That's actually a very good comparison. That's what I would say to that. Uh, let's see here. Well, one minute, Stephen. All right, everybody wants to get to White Lotus. All right, everybody. I hope you had fun in this extremely scalding hot stream. All right, we're going to talk about White Lotus now. So if you have not watched, uh, hey, Voice Inject, if you haven't watched the White Lotus season finale for uh, this, se this season, it's not a season. Don't call it a season for this uh, iteration. Uh, peace out and come back after you've watched it. It's extremely good and you should be watching it. All right. Third story of the day. Boom, baby. All right. So White Lotus. White Lotus, I think, was not only phenomenal, but very interestingly, it went from being like this, um, the first season was like this really interesting commentary on uh, the 1% in the world, uh, as particularly the white 1%. And I thought that was really interesting. But it kind of leveled up with its second season to become like a genre show. And I almost, almost feel to become similar to Knives Out. It became a murder mystery. I mean, I guess the first one was a murder mystery too, but the first one was more like, I mean, no, no, that was an accident. It was more like who gets killed. And it was more like, like the, the absurdity of life. But this one, someone was actually trying to kill Jennifer Coolidge. And I thought that was really interesting. And I think it makes the show much more competitive for like a franchise. And I think that's actually a very good idea. Uh, I, I don't know if it'll continue to win as many Emmys, but it already won a ton of Emmys. So it's all good in that regard. And it did just get a bunch of Golden Globe nominations. I mean, it's incredibly well written. And I think part of the reason that, I think one of the things it benefits from, although it is very singular, so it doesn't have, I think sometimes people feel it's not as authentic as it, authentic as it could be, but it only has Mike White writing and directing, whereas other shows will have other people come in and out and you have a showrunner. So Mike White having such control over this, I think is very interesting. Now he talked about the fact that the reason he decided to kill Tanya off was that in the end of season one, she said that death was the last immersive experience she hadn't done. So he decided to have her do that. And I thought it was fascinating that for season three, he says he's thinking of going to Japan and exploring religion and death. And I was like, I wonder if Tanya will come back as a ghost. I could see this show doing it. Oh, thank you, Clark. That's very kind of you. I think that she's gonna come back. I think she's gonna come back as a ghost. And that's also Madam Butterfly. I thought was a really interesting, also a kind of a wink at where they're gonna come forward to, to, to Japan. And so I think she, I don't know if they'll do a twin sister, Ivan Sarmiento. They could do a twin. But they did twins over on um, Dead to Me. And I don't think White Lotus wants to be copying Dead to Me. Tanner says, I love the way they filmed the boat scene. That was incredible. Why didn't she use the stairs? It was very Tanya, though. I was just amazed she had such great aim. That was incredible. And people pointed out, and I didn't even get this, this show acts on so many different levels. It's, I mean, it operates on so many different levels. She went into the bathroom and came out blasting with a gun, just like the Godfather. Thank you, James. Merry Christmas to you, too. Uh, I thought that was an incredible nod because they had Godfather references throughout the show. That's amazing to me. Rodrigo says, <laughs> that was a great quote. I'm already seeing it on T-shirts, which I think is uh, fantastic. But yeah, I mean, that, the show is just brilliant. It's just really, really smart. It's like Mike, it's, like, it's what Mike White was put on this earth to do. It's like, it's just perfect for him. I, I hope he makes these for a while. He says he has to take a little bit of a break now, which sucks, but I mean, hopefully we'll get season three pretty soon. So I do, but I think we have to get some kind of closure on Greg, but continuing with the Tanya story, again, makes it more genre-y. I think people liked this season better because I think that the commentary on wealth was very off-putting for a lot of people, understandably so, but everyone can relate to sex. <laughs> So it did very well for that reason. Uh, Gigi says, I'm so happy for Megan Fahey in the final episodes. I'm impressed with her character. She did a wonderful acting job. She really did. She did an incredible job. We'll talk about all the different storylines in just a moment. But I thought it had a very tense ending. You really were kind of wondering who was going to be dead for sure. You were like, I don't know. I'm not sure. 
And especially because they'd said there were multiple dead bodies at the, in episode one, but they were all on the yacht. And I thought the performances here were, not only is the writing so good, but the performances are incredible. And I've been reading some interviews over the past few days, and someone pointed out that Mike White casts people based on a little bit of a part of their personality that he feel fits with the, with the character that he's created. And I think that's genius. So he's not only writing and directing this, but he's casting it too. And I thought, I think Mike White must be a really good judge of people. And I, as someone themselves who likes, well, I would hope that I was a good judge of people. I think it's an important skill to have. And if you, I think anyone should try and cultivate being a good judge of people. And a big part of being a good judge of people is being able to accept their flaws. Uh, and real, you know, and, and your flaws in yourself. I think being a realist is extremely important skill for people to have. So it's just fantastic. It's just really good. And I, I, again, I think it's like Mike White's magnum opus. It's like just who he is meant to be. All right, so let's talk about some of the storylines. I thought they were all excellent. I thought Jennifer Coolidge did a wonderful job. Uh, and the fact that it became so surreal. You know what I thought was interesting? I didn't see that coming. I didn't see Greg coming to murder her until people posted the theories online. When, um, uh, what's his name? When, um, uh, where is that? When Tom Hollander's Quentin told that story about knowing a cowboy in his younger days. And people are online were like, it's Greg, and he's going to have Quentin kill her for his money. And that was so so freakish to me because it was done so slowly and it came into the storyline so slowly that you always like to think that if someone was plotting a murder against you, you would know. You'd be like, I'd catch you. I'd be on to it. I'd be on to you. And here I was like, wow, he actually got her. That was incredible to me. I thought, it, you know, and it was also the misdirect with the thinking that it was more about an affair, that that's what the secret was. And I loved, it was so Tanya that right before Quentin died and he's bleeding out of his mouth and he's like on his last like sparks of life and Tanya's like, is, he, is, is Greg having an affair? Is Greg cheating on me? And it's like, who cares at this point? He tried to kill you. I mean, that was incredible. That was just so Tanya. And I thought it was, it was just brilliant. It was just so well done. So I did like that. I thought that, I thought that um, Portia, her assistant, was a lot like her. She was kind of a junior Tanya. And I thought that was fascinating too. And so that was really well done. And I thought the whole thing about how um, Jack went from being like this, uh, you know, this charismatic fun guy to being a gigolo to being like maybe like a killer, uh, you know, or like a, a thug for the mafia. That was incredible. I mean, just the layers. Talk about a glass onion. I mean, that was just really, really incredible. I did see that Connie Britton was supposed to be in season two, and I don't think that would have worked. I don't think they can bring anybody back but Tanya, even though as much as I'd like to see them again. Someone said they should eventually do a White Lotus All-Stars, and I was like, they should, but that's not season three. Maybe for season four, they could do a White Lotus All-Stars where people who have a certain amount of White Lotus points come to the resort, and that could be the reasoning for why they all come. And also, they're all Four Seasons resorts, by the way. They were at the Four Seasons Hawaii. I know some people have actually stayed at that resort. And that was a Four Seasons um, in Sicily. And if you go on their website, it's so surreal to see those locations on the website. You're like, oh, wow, I just went on vacation there. <laughs> David says, Grace, you said in one of your last live streams you'd love to see more people of color in White Lotus. I agree. Issa Rae is, I don't know about Issa Rae. I mean, I, I, can't, I trust Mike White's casting at this point. But if he doesn't put a... Uh, storyline with characters of color as guests in the next season, it's going to be bad for him. Uh, Juan says, I get the feeling White Lotus one day will surprise people with a holiday themed season. That's funny too. I wouldn't be against that. Kyle says, did you realize uh, that the pimp was in on it? He was never, uh... you mean that, that guy who was supplying the drugs? Uh, yeah, I thought he was definitely in on it. When she took the rope and the, and the tape out of the out of the bag, I was like, this is very real. Although there was always a part of me that thought Quentin was going to be like, no, no, you're, this is all a huge misunderstanding. And that was so incredible that they were able to just still have that little kernel of doubt that I was still like, maybe you're overreacting, Tanya, but I feel like you're not. And I think that the stuff with Jack sim simult simultaneously happening where he dropped uh, Portia off at the airport, and some people have theorized that maybe he was trying, he was supposed to kill Portia, maybe. 
I don't know why Portia, when he went to the bathroom, instead of just taking his phone, I don't know why Portia didn't run away. I would have hailed a taxi and run away. Although who knows if the taxi was controlled by the mob. I mean, you're in a really bad situation. Jesse the Goodwitch says, I think the choice they made with Tanya is last season of Game of Thrones bad. Oh, I didn't think so. I thought it was very Tanya. And it was very screaming at the screen being like, use the stairs, take your heels off. Just stay on the boat and wait for the police to come. Like, why did she feel like she had to get off the boat? All right, so let's talk about the other storylines, all right? Uh, let's talk first about, I guess, Aubrey Plaza with her husband and that couple's vacation. I felt very bad for Aubrey Plaza and um, her husband, Will Sharp. I, I thought it was a weird, a, a weird conclusion that what they needed, the spice they needed in their marriage was the idea that they could be cheating on each other. I was like, I think you guys should get divorced. <laughs> that was my takeaway from, um, uh, that's funny, David. That was, that was my takeaway from that storyline. I was like, this is not a good marriage. And I, you know, some people said, why didn't they show whether or not Daphne and, um, uh, what's his name, his character's name? Why didn't, why didn't they show if Daphne and Ethan uh, hooked up on that island? And I think it's because they showed us so many other scenes. And I think it was very brilliant. I think that Mike White, and they didn't show what happened between, for sure, what happened between Aubrey Plaza and Theo James. You don't know. And I think that was the point. You don't know for sure. You just have to take that person's story at face value. And I got to tell you, here's my theory in life. If I don't know for sure, I feel, that it ha I feel that means it happened. And I think you should break up or get divorced. I, I mean, this season was a little tough for me because, I, I mean, some people are okay with it. I have a big problem with cheating. I feel like there's two things you should never mess with in a, in a relationship. You should never cheat on someone. I mean, you can break up. But you should never cheat on someone. You should never mess with their money, with, with each other's money. I feel like that's like the two, like, you should not do those things. And I, I also feel you should respect each other. But the other two are like the deal breakers. So this was a weird story. This was a weird season for me because I was like, these relationships are all broken. So I thought that was very interesting. But I, you know, I did like the characters quite a bit. And I thought they were very realistic characters. And so I thought they were very, very well done. I don't know what's going on with, with Will. Some people felt there was a vibe between Will, uh, you know, Ethan and uh, Theo James's character, Cameron. I could kind of see that maybe. I could kind of see that. I thought it was weird. I thought not, none of them seemed to actually like each other that much. And I think maybe it was underscoring that sometimes people get married for reasons besides being in love with each other or being attracted to each other. And that's a really tough thing to discuss too. So I appreciate the sophistication of the show. I think that's excellent. So, but it was a great, I mean, I wouldn't want to be either of those couples or hang out with either of those couples, but they made for great television. Uh, and yeah, the trainer was fantastic. And the fact that uh, Theo James clearly knew that wasn't his son. And, he, and it bothered him. I was like, why does it bother you? And he was, but he was still going along with it. And that was sad that that child liked Theo James so much thinking that was his father. I was like, the kid loves you, man. If you're staying in this marriage, stick it up, suck it up for this kid. Uh, then as for the, the father, the grandfather, the son, and the grandson, that, those three generations of men, uh, I thought that was a, a really interesting storyline as well. And I thought it was interesting, you know, they kept blaming each other, being like, you're a bad influence on me. Oh, it was your fault. Oh, I learned it from you. I learned it from you, Grandpa. I learned it from you, Dad. And I was like, oh, I think some of this is also genetic because you're all the same guy. And I thought that was really interesting. You're all the same guy at different stages of your life. And I thought that was fascinating to me. I thought that was really interesting. Like, we all thought Adam DeMarco's um, Albi was a rube, but he cut a pretty slick deal with his dad. He was like, hey, you know, I, by the way, I knew that he was getting played. That I knew. I agreed. I agreed with his father that he was an easy mark. I was like, boy, Albi, you are a ridiculously easy mark. And I know, I think Albie does have some maturing to do, but you know what? I think that, I think that um, uh, Dominic, the father, didn't give that money to, the, to, make, to, you know, to help Lucia or to help his son. He gave, it was worth the 50K to him to get his family back. He was like, that's fine. He's like, I'm paying 50K, so I get my family back. I felt kind of bad for the women in their life. Again, I felt bad. For, I mean, they were interesting characters, but I felt very bad for the women in their life, for his, for his wife and for the, the daughter in that family. I felt bad for them. 
I didn't know that was Laura Dern's voice, by the way. It didn't sound like Laura Dern to me. I would have loved to have seen her. Maybe they can, maybe they can come back at some point and Laura Dern comes on the trip. Laura Dern would kill on this show. She would absolutely kill. Um, as for Lucia uh, and her friend, uh, what's her friend's name? Uh, Mia, the sp aspiring singer. I thought that was great. And I liked that they, you know, arguably maybe did the best out of it. I thought they did a really nice job. I thought the two actresses were very good. I thought it was crazy how they were able to run just ripshod through that hotel. I was like, they have no control over this hotel. Although again, I told you that, you know, the series, somebody pointed out the series was kind of about how uh, human relations, let's say, can be used uh, for negotiation tactics, and you know they put an LGBTQ slant on it as well, and showed how it can be used in different ways. And I thought that was really interesting. And why not? If other people are using it for currency, why not use it for currency in that way too? I mean, I think it seems totally fair to me. And so I thought I thought they were great. I thought they were very interesting characters, and I think that they were kind of like you know it was a little bit like Midsummer Night's Dream. That's interesting actually, and they were kind of like the two pucks running around causing mischief and getting people outside their comfort zone. That's really interesting, actually. That makes, that's fascinating to me. What a well-written show. Oh, maybe it will still win a bunch of awards. I think that's really fascinating. And I thought those two actresses did a wonderful job. Really, really wonderful job. Hey, Dimitri. I also thought it was interesting that Mia started out being this very innocent type character that Lucia talked into doing this. And it turned out that she was like a fish to water. Uh, Dimitri uh, says, good show, but endings were a little too ambiguous for me. Uh, but I don't think they actually are that ambiguous, Dimitri. I think you really have to think about it. Um, and that's, you know, you just see these people on their vacation and then they go back to their lives. You don't even see them in their real lives, which I think is fascinating. And then you have uh, the woman who runs uh, the resort. I do agree, Mika, that Valentina did not capture our hearts quite the way Murray Abraham did as Armand in the first season. But she did a very nice job, and I thought she was very, a very kind character, and I thought her story was very moving. So I liked her. I thought she, she was a good character. I think her story, the real problem with Valentina was that her storyline just really wasn't very well developed. Although I do agree that there's an awful lot of uh, people working at these uh, hotels who are using the empty rooms very effectively. And I think that's all the storylines, right? Uh, did I miss any of the other storylines? Oh, Keith feels the other way around. He preferred Valentina. By the way, I feel all the uh, uh, behavior in the lobby was inappropriate. You cannot be that much chatter. I thought that was a very unprofessional hotel, by the way. In, the, in both seasons, I feel like the hotels aren't quite depicted the way they should be. I did like the Porsche. I talked about Porsche a little. I loved the Porsche asked Albie for his phone number at the airport. And then they kind of ended up together anyway. I kind of think they make a great couple, to be honest with you. I wouldn't be surprised if maybe if we do All Stars that they're the couple that comes back. I thought they were a great couple. And I'm very curious. I was surprised that there was no follow-up with Greg. That takes incredible self-control on the part of Mike White. That you didn't see him, like, signing for the body or meeting with his lawyer and getting, uh, you know, and getting the, um, you know, and getting the money. Jiko, I didn't like the hotel for a season. I've seen, I've, I've stayed at some, I like, I've stayed at some hotels in Italy that I preferred to that hotel. Um, so I prefer the Hawaii hotel. It did have some beautiful views though. I went to Sorrento in Italy and it was just stunning. I, Italy is a beautiful place to visit. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Greg, you know, but I thought Greg was very realistic, you know. And he actually was trying to kill her. And he succeeded. And he doesn't have to share the money with Quentin anymore. By the way, I want to give a shout out to Tom Hollander. That was an incredible performance as Quentin. He came in halfway through the season. And he was just, the way he just spoke. And he wove such a hypnotic story. And he was able to seem both very kind, but yet also menacing at the same time. I thought that was incredible. Yes, Chico, Aubrey Plaza's outfits were also incredible. I've never seen Aubrey Plaza look so good. Although I thought she needed a little more eye makeup. But I think that was done intentionally. I think they tried to make her look a little older. But I, I was glad that Aubrey Plaza finally got a little bit uh, attention for being a cool leading lady. She doesn't get enough, I don't think she gets enough credit for being a leading lady. Portia's outfits were hilarious, Jacob. And as everybody said, she ended on the worst note, and it was hilarious. 
So do you have any questions for me about White Lotus? And then I better get going. We've been, we've been streaming for a while here, boy. Yeah, that one shot about Aub of Aubrey was incredible, which is actually apparently based on an actual Italian film, which is really cool. Keith, I have no idea why Tanya didn't take the stairs into the small boat. That made no sense to me. I mean, she saw the guy get off the boat. That to me was the only thing where I was like, that's crazy. I actually gasped out loud when she hit her head and you could hear the sound effect. Mahul, this was the thing, you know, we're almost done and then uh, we're gonna move, to, I don't know if we'll either stream tomorrow or Friday, I'm not sure, I'll have to see what my timing is like. Clark, Clark, I'm not gonna dye my hair blue. I've, I've always wanted to dye my hair blue, but I'm not gonna be doing it anytime soon. But I appreciate, I appreciate the, uh, the, the question. Hey Argo. Again, Mario, I don't have any requests for season three. I totally trust Mike White. Oh, Ivan, you're gonna be so happy you saw Avatar in 3D. Oh, thank you, Keltrick. I was talking by the coworkers yesterday at work about how amazing the season of White Lotus was and someone made a point that TV has been better than movies for a while now. Well, also, TV has an unfair advantage in that they have more time to tell the story where movies only have two and a half, one and a half to two to three hours. Um, I think that makes it difficult. But yeah, TV is so at the top of its game, it's hard not to just be watching that. And you get so much story. Thank you, Kyle. Uh, yes, Jesse, all the Jennifer Coolidge memes are just fantastic. My friend just bought a shirt like that. Joy, that scene with Aubrey Plaza and all the men looking at her was her feeling, I think maybe the awakening of her like uh, attractiveness. You know, and you know, cause she really stepped up her game. That was her first amazing outfit. Owl Watch, I did see the trailer for the new Mario, Super Mario thing at Universal. It looks weird to me. It looks a little bit like Legoland. It looks very underage, like for, ch for very small children. We'll see how it does. Natra says, Grace, what are your thoughts on the Critics' Choice noms? Did you see all the Babylon love as a member? Did you get to, you get to go? If so, will you go this year? Uh, I don't want to travel to California for that. And um, I've never had an interest in going to that, but I'm very honored to be able to vote. Uh, and I thought they turned out great. Although I do think 10 directors is a little bit much. Uh, if, you, if, if you can expand how many nominees there can be, I think it makes the nomination mean less. Uh, you hated Portia, Jose? And that's a very nice username. It will be okay, says, is TV better than the movies? There are a lot of TV shows that no one talks about. There are a lot of good TV shows. Why don't I like to go to the Critics' Choice? Well, here's the problem. To me, it seems weird. You know, I'm very honest in my reporting. So it would be weird for me to go sit at a table with maybe like, I've said like a lot of stuff about how I think Babylon is, is, is well, let's see, I haven't seen it yet, but so far it looks really bad to me. So I don't wanna just like, in that context, you know, I do interviews and stuff like that, but you know, it would be weird for me to go and sit next to somebody from Babylon and be like, hey, how's it going? Charlie Lalanistan, thank you, Charlie. I think that'd be weird. Kyle, I'm sorry, I missed your super chat. Caden says, if I were Portia, I too would be truly not care about Tanya. She was an awful boss who would have used her as a human shield. Oh, I don't think so. I mean, they kind of, I maybe at one point I would have thought that, but I really felt that they kind of banded together at the end there. I thought that was nice. I mean, honestly, I think Portia would have used Tanya as a human shield. They were very similar. Steven says, did you prefer season one or two more? Um, I like them equally. I think they're an experience. I think that you can't enjoy season two as much if you didn't watch season one. It's just one giant story. All right, I love talking to you guys. David says, Portia really just went to the airport picking out the ugliest outfits. That's right. I think she didn't try to call about Tanya. It was funny when Albie was like, yeah, there was someone floating in the water and then a bunch of dead people on a yacht. And she was like, mm, okay. Because um, I think she was worried about repercussions from the Sicil Sicilian mafia that were clearly involved. Carter says, my family and I are going to see Avatar 2 this weekend. Oh, you're going to have a great time, Carter. Have a wonderful time. 
All right, I better get going. I got to get working on some other stuff. Thank you so many of you for joining today. I had a lovely time with you on today's stream. Uh, and I'll see you soon. Uh, and also, don't forget, uh, Avatar Spoiler Review will be going up tomorrow. That's what I'm going to work on now. Thanks, Chris. Thank you for joining. Uh, you guys are great. I love doing these live streams. I'm so happy that we do them more often now. That it was a good choice. All right, everybody. Bye. Bye, everybody.